Well, every now and then you just need a VHS VCR. This is a Sharp and it's a VC-H972. And I actually purchased this unit brand new in probably 1996 or 1997. I've lost the screws since then. And uh, I need to copy a tape. And so the story about this unit is I purchased this new uh, for my mother before she passed in 2003. And, uh-oh. I like the sound of that. It just needs to get broken in a little bit. I'm just checking uh, the protrusion on the heads. Uh, I don't know if I can show you this. So if I zoom in just a little bit, and we'll try to take it to the point of defocusing. And will it still focus here? Yes, it will. Okay, let's keep going. And that's the tipping point right there. We'll bring it back just a little bit and let it refocus, hopefully. Okay, so down here at this little gap right there, as I run the heads around, you should actually see a bit of protrusion. That's one of the hi-fi heads right there. Then those are the two video heads and another hi-fi head right there, and then the other two video heads. And uh, yeah, they actually have a bit of protrusion left. So I'm putting my finger on here and I'm rotating this and I'm feeling the amount of protrusion the head has, but should only be like five or 10 thousandths of an inch, very, very small amount. Now these are worn, so I'm gonna say they're probably in the three to five thousandths of an inch. Um, actually, I have replaced individual heads on a cylinder years and years ago when my eyesight was better and uh, made a very uh, a very bomb VCR Dolby Stereo Linear Tracks 58 micron SP heads with Hi-Fi Stereo. I couldn't find any uh, 58 micron Hi-Fi heads, so I had to just go with the 38s that they had, but it worked absolutely perfect. It was like uh, duplicator quality tapes that I could make on this thing with both hi-fi and linear stereo. Okay, so I have my capture device set up over here and I'm going to go ahead and plug an SD card into it. And one moment please while I make sure the time and the date is correct on this unit and it's close enough for me. So I'm going to go ahead and start the capture device in three, two, one, capture. It always fails the first time, so second try, three, two, one, capture. And it shows it is recording. I'm gonna go ahead and apply power to this unit. Okay, power is on. And I don't see anything. Let's hit the power button. Oh, yeah, there it is. And look at that, I actually get a display. So before I do anything, I'm just going to go ahead and pop a tape into this and see if it's going to eat it or play. Maybe it needs a mode select service. Um, this has been out of service since approximately 2003 when my mother passed. Oh, it's having a problem taking up the tape. Oh, that's not good. Wow. Yeah, yeah, something is uh, definitely messed up in the works here. It won't even load the tape. And it's going to eat it, I'm sure. Yep, ate the tape. Oh, well. Oh, the tension band is actually stuck. So the tension band right here off my screwdriver a little bit. The tension band, which is this arm right here, this is back tension. It's actually stuck. You can see it's stuck right there. And so this is a brake. I could probably just like use brute force. Maybe not. Get this thing. There it goes. Okay, now the tension band has been released. 
So with the brake released, this thing should spin very nicely. Okay, let's try it again now. No, if that's all it was, that is going to be a very easy fix. Like I said, it's been sitting for 20 years. Oh, it still won't load. What the heck? Loading motor is noisy. Let's give it another try. Oh, finished that time. Not quite. Maybe the loading motor is slipping. But it's not eating the tape, so that's good. Yeah, I saw her trying to trying to run. I was hoping it was going to be a quick and easy fix so I can uh, duplicate a couple tapes for a customer. But it appears that the loading motor, which must have a belt. I see the motor right there. It's just got a worm gear on it. And obviously the loading belts just, or the uh, take up belt's fine because it does pull the tape back in. Shoot. What if I can take this back to Costco where I bought it and get my money back? Nope. You check the tape. Thank you very much. All right. Well, let's spend a few minutes and tear this thing apart and see what it looks like inside. Power has been removed. So let's just go ahead and pop this front off of the unit. This is back when 19 micron SP heads or SLP heads were all the rage back in the last, last days of VHS. Uh, no, no screws on the bottom, so that's a good sign. Just got these plastic clips to remove. Okay. Plastic is not meant to bend that much. Wow. Well, it came off without breaking, so that's a good sign. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect the capture device because I don't think I need this. And I will stop the capture because you didn't get to see anything other than no signal which I probably won't even post. Now I did notice down below here, uh, there is a single screw right there, which I believe uh, holds the mechanism up in some fashion. So let's go ahead and unplug the cylinder motor and we'll unplug the audio control erase head. I haven't really done many sharps, so this, this is the first time for me. Well, I think I have done them in the past. Okay, we'll go ahead. Did I just crack that board? Might have. Uh, there's got to be more screws in the back of this. Or maybe not. You can't be serious. That is it? It's in a plug. Oh, there's the cylinder or the uh, video heads, so those are unplugged. Uh, something's holding it down right here. And there's no screws in the bottom of it. Oh, wait, my bad. There it is. There's 
one screw in the back. Wow, sneaky, sneaky. Hopefully you saw that. I apologize if you did not. And what is this? Oh, that's the loading motor. Okay, unplugged. And the mechanism is out of the unit completely right there. And I see one belt that's not in that bad a shape down here. Uh, there is no belt on the loading motor, so I don't understand unless this grease... I don't know, the grease is perfectly fine. I thought maybe it was the grease was all gummed up. The grease is in excellent shape, and it does not use a mode select switch. Uh, it uses an optical switch. So if you look at the bottom of this gear, and I realize it's washed out, so let me try to zoom in on it. So if you look at the bottom of that gear, you'll see there are slots cut in it. There we go, that's much easier to see. So the slots actually block or don't block light passages and that tells the mechanism or the processor what state the mechanism is actually in. This belt has, it's, a, it's just a little bit slippery, but uh, I've definitely had much, much worse over the years. Now, why is this loading motor so noisy? That might be part of the problem. Uh, well, let's take our chances. Because, I mean, it doesn't work now, so if it quits working less, it won't really be that much of an embarrassment. So I did remove that one screw off camera, and I'm sorry about that. And we'll go ahead and remove this one right there. And then I'm hoping that this will just simply lift out of here. And so there is the gear mechanism. And oh, look at that. Oh, it's got a crack in it. That's going to cause the loading motor to want to slip on the gear. Or on the shaft, I should say. But I think they made this thing so you can service it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get a Sharpie, just so I can get this reoriented in the correct position. If I can get the Sharpie to come out of the can of junk, I'm just gonna go ahead and put some red marks right there so we know that's how it goes back together. Sorry, that was off camera. I should zoom out, I'm so sorry. Okay, that should be good. Yeah, it's just slipping on the on the shaft. That's why it's so noisy. Yeah, see that gap right there? I can squeeze it together and apart. Okay, let's go ahead and zoom back in now. Okay, there's the crack. So as always, I'm gonna go ahead and just pull this off. And I'm gonna go ahead and rough up the shaft of the motor. And I'll rough up the interior of this. We'll heat the shaft with a hot air blower, add a bit of hot glue and put these two back together while it's still hot. More or less in that position right there. And I think we're gonna be good after that. That's where it looked like there was a washer. It must just be the bottom of the shaft. Okay. Okay, one moment while I get my Harbor Freight Dremel knockoff. Okay, so I do have the exposure pushed up just a little bit, so you might be able to see what's actually going on. 
I've got my motor connected with some alligator leads, as you can see right here, to my benchtop power supply. So I'm just going to go ahead and power this thing on. And the motor is running. And I've got my Drillmaster Harbor Freight. Nothing but the best here. I'm just going to go ahead and score up the shaft a little bit. And of course, I'll we'll have to clean that off, obviously. Okay, very nice. That's going to help the hot glue bond to the shaft to fill in the nooks and crannies. And so I want to do the same thing to the end of the gear right here. I want to score up the inside of that so I can fill that with hot glue. So, okay, there you can see it. And I'm just going to go ahead around in here. Score it up a little bit. The same thing on this side. And that should be good. So you can see it's all scratched up on the inside. So I've got my hot glue gun heating up right now. Then I'll apply some heat to the motor shaft itself right there with the hot air blower. Get it nice and warm. Add just a little bit. Normally I add way too much of hot glue to the inside of the gear. Well, the mating surface, I should call it. It's, it's not really a gear. Then add a bit of hot glue to the motor shaft and then press the two halves together. So one moment, please. So before that happens, I'm just going to drop this in some acetone and try to make sure I've cleaned out the hole, hopefully. Uh, because the less oil there is on things better it grips. Oil makes it slip. And the whole point of roughing this up is so that the glue will bond in the nooks and crannies. Kind of like the Thomas's English muffin. Okay. So we'll let that dry. I'm going to turn this back on for a moment. We'll bring this back into view. I'm just going to go ahead and wipe the motor shaft with some acetone. Okay, I'm good with that. Power supply off. And just because the motor was noisy, I'm just gonna go ahead and add just a bit of oil to the bushing right here. If it'll ever come out, there it goes. Turn this back on. I'm going to go ahead and pull it in and out a few times to help distribute that oil down into the bushing. And then I realize there is oil on the end of it. I'll just sop it up with a cotton swab, just like that. Okay, I think we're good. Power supply off. There we go. Okay, so here is the hot air blower. Move this over in more or less the center of the screen. I'm just going to heat up the shaft a little bit.
and I think that should be good. I have it at 350 degrees. Now I'll try to do this all in real time. So hot glue gun. Gonna add some glue to the center of this. And then just press it. Oh, about that far onto the shaft. And I think we will be good. I'll have to clean up some of this hot glue. Just like that. And I still have movement in the motor. It didn't go too terribly far. Okay. The gap has grown a little bit, but there's nothing I can do about that. It's not a gear at least. If it were a gear and I was doing this, I would go ahead and hollow out the inside of the gear so that when I added the hot glue and put it back on the shaft, that it did not have a crack like that. So I'm just going to go ahead and turn this on and it runs perfectly fine. And uh, yeah, based on the amount of pressure I needed to install that, I think that we're going to be perfect. Okay, let's go ahead and put the gear back into the mechanism assembly, if I can find it, that is. One moment, please. Okay, so hopefully this will all go back together peacefully. Oh, look at that. Okay, let's go ahead and gingerly put these screws back in it. Hopefully it's still in frame. And we'll turn it back around in this direction right there. It looks pretty good so far. Oh, look at that. I do have a little bit of play. Perfectly fine. We'll go ahead and reconnect the DC power supply to the leads back here. All right. Power this thing on. See what happens. Should just turn. Okay, we made at least one complete revolution. Reverse the direction. Uh-oh, that's not good. My lead broke. Oh, cheap Chinese garbage. Yeah, the lead from my power supply just broke the freak off. So yeah, that's supposed to be pushed and crimped into there, but it was not. Well, once again, we'll go ahead and reverse the direction. So I'm just gonna plug that in a little bit. And here we go the other way. Perfect. Try to get that hair, nope, it's not leaving. Okay, got the piece of hair off. And I'm perfectly happy with this. There's where the motor actually lives. And which way did this thing come out of there? <laughs> Don't remember. Had to be in this orientation. Okay.
All right, good as new. Look at that. <clears throat> I think that I will grab a paper towel and just clean that pickup belt since I'm here. Yeah, it's a part. Why not? So acetone. I know you can't see it, but I'll go ahead and pull the used belt off. Absorb some acetone into it. And then just go ahead and wipe off the contaminants off the belt. People tell me that this is going to shorten the belt life. Well, the belt's already two decades old. And I've had extremely good luck doing this with belts. To remove the contaminants over time. I think it actually makes the belt last a little bit longer. Get all the crud off of it. Now look at how much is picked up already. We'll do it a couple more times until I run out of acetone, which I'm almost out of. Oh, that feels so much better. It's actually very grippy now. And I don't know if I have, I do have a little bit of acetone left. Oh, it definitely has a lot more torque now. Yeah, that's good. I'm perfectly happy with that. Okay, let's put this thing back in the mechanism and fire it up again, see what happens. Hopefully better results. Okay, chassis coming back up. We'll zoom out just a little bit so you can see what I'm actually doing here. Let's go ahead and wipe off that emitter. Nothing special. There's the detectors right there. Let me go ahead and set that back here and zoom in on it. So there are the uh, photo eyes, the infrared emitters and receivers that measure the cam gear. So it says cam switch A. And then this is cam switch B right there. There is the take up reel sensor. It's another pair of photo eyes. Then over here is the uh, emitter labeled cassette LED. Then on this side is the, the supply reel sensor. What did they call the take up and end sensors? I'm wondering. Oh, look at that start sensor right there. And then way over here on this side uh, is in sensor perfectly. They named it correctly. Good job, Sharp. Good job. So I don't think I need to do any power supply work. Uh, the power supply appears to be working perfectly fine. And I don't see any bulge caps. I looked them over really closely. Um, that IC703 definitely generates a little bit of heat. As you can see by the circuit board is darker around it. Okay, we'll get this kind of centered back up here. And hopefully this will just drop right back into place. And yeah, good with that. And the ground screw. That was the problem. Talk on it. Oops, sorry. There we go. And we'll wait and go ahead and reattach everything else until we get the front back on the unit. But I do need to plug in the heads. There we go. Plugged in. This is the cylinder motor assembly up on top. 
audio control erase head right there. And loading motor that goes down under here. I need a pair of needly nose pliers. It kind of goes up and under, underneath here. Let's see if I can get this plugged in easily. Maybe. There we go. Okay, that is plugged in. And the full erase head plugs in right here. And I think I'll go ahead and snap the front back on it because I don't have a way to identify the buttons any other way. Oh, I forgot to open the door. There we go. Door's got to be open first when you assemble these things back together. There we go. All nice and together. There was a single screw in the bottom of this unit. Okay, all the clips are clipped right there. Oh, pinch roller, oh my gosh, this thing is toast. You know what, I think I still have the uh, manual exposure on. Let me turn that off. Okay, back in auto, that's much better. And we'll put it back in autofocus. Yeah, look at that thing. Now it's going to be what it is because I can't do anything about it because they don't make these anymore. So we'll zoom back out. And I think we're ready to give this thing a try. Harbor Freight Dremel unplugged, VCR plugged back in, power on, no change. Uh, let's get the capture device connected just in case it actually does work, wouldn't that be something? Okay, right channel, left channel, and video connected at this point. Sorry if I was in the way there. And remote control for the Cloner Alliance Box Pro. And recording in three, two, one, capture. And it never captures the first time when there's no signal. So three, two, one, capture. Okay, power has been applied. We'll hit the power button. And I should get a screen that basically just tells me that it needs to be set up and I've got nothing. Why? Well, I'm connected correctly. Hmm, that's weird. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and... Oh, I think I turned it off. Oh, no. It will not power up at this point. What is going on? Oh, shoot. All right. Hang on. Okay, I think I see the problem. When I put this together, it's pushing on the play button right there. So it's activating the play command all the time. And I don't know if I can, now I gotta pull this front back off or maybe just up. There we go, it snapped back into place. So it was pushing on that play button all the time. So it's got these little levers like that. I don't know if you can see them move or not. But if the key scan command is continuous on these units, it won't do anything because it has to scan every key individually. Okay, so power back on. Capture device is still recording. And I do see a display. Yes, I have a display on the screen. 
Let's pop a tape into it and see if we get any different results. And it loaded. And it's playing. 15, 16. That is perfectly fine. And look at those 19 micron heads in action. Look at that. It's working perfectly. Let's see if it'll play a SP tape. Ask it to give the tape back. It's definitely much quieter than it was uh, before it was very noisy. Okay, here is a standard play tape or a two hour tape. Geronimo! And it's playing perfectly fine <laughs> once again. Auto tracking. And then there is the search command in the SP mode. Looks great because it's using the SP and the SLP heads. When there's a dropout, it switches over to the other set of heads that have good signal. And it's working absolutely perfectly. So another one saved from the recycle bin. I may actually get to copy a couple of VHS tapes with this unit. How about reverse search? Does it actually work? I think the heads are a little bit worn. There are some dropouts, but I think it's going to be just fine. Well, once again, I want to thank you for your views, your comments, your support through these trying times since my daughter has had her accident. Once again, she is getting better. I do appreciate all the very generous donations that you guys have donated to us, especially my daughter. She really does appreciate it. Um, yeah, go ahead and uh, a let me turn this down just a little bit. I don't think anyone would be here if, if they uh, said they didn't get some amount of thrill out of it. So yeah, you can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter at NorCal715. You can email me, NorCal715videos at gmail.com. That is the best way to contact me. Once again, please be very patient. I have a full-time job and a lot going on, and I do these repairs in my spare time. If you try to contact me on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, it might be weeks or even months or never. I have not checked those messages. I've been so busy recently. So please, Gmail only, and be patient. Uh, like I said on the previous video, I normally take November and December off, and then my daughter got into the accident in the beginning of January. Things are just starting to turn around. Once again, um, I've answered just like five emails since then. I have not had time to do it. I've been so busy. Once again, the standard outro. Remember with your help, we can try to keep these things out of the landfill, out of the recycle bin, and out of the e-waste facility. Everyone, once again, thank you for making it to the end of this video. I really, really appreciate it. Everyone have a great day. Once again, thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye. Okay, follow up. And okay, let's get a couple batteries. So I just wanted to go ahead and make sure the remote actually worked. Um, I did take the batteries out of this remote 20, almost 20 years ago. So I'm just going to put a couple of uh, rechargeables in here that I keep for other items. And so the uh, tape is playing right now. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit pause. And it does actually pause, play. So we'll just try a couple things. Fast forward search. And look at that working perfectly. Reverse search. Working absolutely great. So the remote actually works. That is a very good thing. It needs to be clean, but for what I'm using it for, I just need it to actually work. Once again, thank you everyone for watching. I really do appreciate it. Bye-bye.